Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and it feels so good to be back. I took a little hiatus about five weeks, and now we're back right here with found film number 66. That's 66 documented times that we've taken an old roll of film that was shot many moons ago, millions of years ago, but never processed. Well, we process this roll right here in color, and you're gonna see it. You know, I can't stress to you enough just how good it feels to be back. Like I said in that goofy intro, I did have to take a tiny hiatus. I had to step away from YouTube for a short time, about five weeks. Uh, I had a lot of issues, a lot of things going on personally in my life. I lost my father last month. We had a family vacation we planned, and it was a 10-day excursion. I've had a ton of customer work coming in. So I felt it was probably best, rather than sacrifice the quality of these wonderfully delicious videos, that was strange, uh, I would step away just for a short time, regroup, gather myself, and now I'm back. We have a brand spanking new found film. And the, uh, well, for those of you that are new to this channel, found film, at least to me, is an old roll of typically Super 8, but we do some 16 millimeter and occasionally a, a regular 8 millimeter. That's rare. Uh, but it's a roll of film that was shot many moons ago. At least we think it was shot a long, long time ago and then never processed. They come from various places, a plethora of sources uh, like garage sales online, or somebody might find a roll in a bag, a camera bag when they bought the camera, second hand, or thrift stores, or they come from anywhere. They've been in storage for years and years, or in a garage, or something like that. Now, there's a difference between old found film that was shot many years ago and not processed, and old film that was shot recently and not processed. That brings me to this. If you personally have an old roll of found film, if you bought a camera on eBay or at, at any of the auction sites or locally, and it had a roll of film in it and you didn't shoot it and you want to see what's on it, you can absolutely send it to me as long as it's an enclosed roll of film. I don't really like the roll film that goes from one roll to the other because that camera has probably been opened and closed and exposed and it's a lot of wasted time for typically nothing. But you can send that roll to me or that cartridge to me and my deal is I will process it and scan it for absolutely nothing. Here's the caveat. I keep the film and I also get to decide whether or not we show it right here on this incredibly popular with a only tiny audience, YouTube channel during my found film. I'd be happy to send you a free digital copy of that film. Just let me know. Uh, I, I also process film regularly for people, but I do have to charge. Like if you shoot a roll or you're testing a camera or something like that, send me an email. I can take care of that for you as well, but I do charge. Anyway, moving along, what do we have today? We have a very old roll of Ektachrome 160 Type G film. Now, there's a couple different types of old Ektachrome 160. There's a Type A and there's a Type G, but the, the year that it was manufactured kind of matters when it comes to processing it in color. Well, properly. Well, almost properly in color. You see, if it says process EM26 on it, like this cartridge does right here, then you can use full temperature E6 chemicals on this, and that's exactly what I did. Expect very little color out of it, uh, color shifting, muted colors, very dull, dull colors, if you should get any at all, and usually you get a little bit. I've done videos on this before. In fact, not too long ago, a couple months ago, I did one where I shot the roll. Anyway, that's what I did with this roll. I processed it in color because I don't do that a, a whole lot with found film. Uh, I got this roll middle of last year. It came with a few others. Got it from eBay. And there's one other roll of this that was fully exposed. The others were not. I think they were still in the boxes, sealed. 
So I do have one more roll of this that I'm kind of excited to see what was on it. And uh, you'll see why in a minute. There's nothing groundbreaking. It's just, it's different. Uh, this particular roll of film right there was manufactured in 1984. I know that because I found an edge code and it was a triangle, a square. You like my, how I, and a triangle. And according to Kodak, that means it was manufactured in 84. This came from, well, I wrote it on here, Richboro, Pennsylvania. I don't think that's where this was shot, but I don't know. Maybe it was. You'll see it in a second. Like I say, I did process it in E6. That's a uh, color chemical that's used today for reversal, color reversal film like Ektachrome 100D, or you can use it on the old Ektachrome 64Ts. Uh, it's just a color reversal process. I use the three bath process. There is a six bath process as well, but I just use the more simple three bath process. A little easier. And when you're working with film like this, it's really, you know, there's really not much difference. So without too much more of this, let's look at the film and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna discuss it just for a bit. Here it is. <laughs> So like I said, it's nothing, you know, there's nothing crazy going on there. Somebody was a little bit over infatuated with the Goodyear blimp. You know what's funny? It almost seems, kind of seems like my area here in the Daytona Beach, Florida area. Kind of seems that way. Maybe a little north, maybe the Ormond Beach area. I, I don't know. I have no idea where that film was shot. But looking at it, I've lived in this area in Volusia County, uh, uh, Central East Coast, Florida, for about almost 50 years. 
so I know beaches and I know sort of the general look, but obviously the blimp in the sky could be anywhere, you know, but, but we do get the blimps. We get it for the racetrack for the Daytona International Speedway. We get it twice a year. Um, the beaches look eerily familiar. They look kind of like North Ormond uh, with the condos. I think that was a condo with the lady and the little boy. Uh, it just kind of, you can walk right down to the beach there. Again, it could be anywhere. I don't know. It could be along any coast in the United States or abroad. Interesting. Um, about three quarters of that film was, was simply shot into the sky uh, of the Goodyear blimp. So if you find that fascinating, then, well, you found the entire film fascinating, or at least three quarters of it. It's always neat. It's sort of delving into what people were thinking back then. This was likely shot right there in the mid-80s. Uh, I call these little time capsules, little uh, a little jaunt down memory lane. And it's always interesting to kind of see if you can get into the mind of what the person was thinking or what that person was doing then. I have no idea who shot this roll of film. Uh, it would be interesting to, to know and to get this roll back to that person. But it's, it's not likely to happen, and it's, it's very difficult to do. I've done it one time, and if you dig back about three years ago, I have a, a tiny little series of videos where we did just that. I had 18 rolls of film, and uh, we ended up locating the lady. Uh, her late husband had shot it all. Uh, I got all the film back to her, and she was pretty elated. Uh, it was a case where he just, kind of like me, filmed everything. And he had so much of it that they just couldn't afford to get it processed. He passed away. She didn't know what to do with it. She sent it to auction. It ended up in my hands, and it ended up back in her hands. Anyway, I hope you like this little uh, this little run down memory lane, this little run back to the, the past, not back to, if you did, you can do me a favor, <laughs> this guy, you can tap that like button for me, it means a lot to me, it's right down there, uh, it, it helps me a little bit, it helps kind of get the word out, and maybe we can locate some of these people, that would be kind of neat, if you think I've, uh, well, earned it, do some of that, just hit the, you know, thing, I'd, I don't beg, I don't, whatever. If you want to subscribe, that would be Fandango. If you don't, well, just kind of tune in when you can. Yeah, I think things are a little a little horror today. You see, I, I love low-budget and independent horror films, always have. That I am not sponsored by anybody but me. But this is a uh, Super 8 feature film that was shot in 1988, released in 89, called Killer. Hmm. And there's killer coffee in there. I'll put a link where you can buy that. Again, I get nothing for it. It was just a very inspirational film for me in 1989 when I was really getting into wanting to make feature films on film. Uh, this then this T-shirt was designed by none other than Dave Knopp over at Knopp Top YouTube channel. Thank you, Dave. It says uh, horror film buff natic. That was me bumbling my words some time ago in the Film Boy 24. I'm thinking about maybe making a few shirts for people. I don't know yet. We'll see. Until the very next time that I see all of your beautiful faces. Here it is. Here it is. It's been a long time coming. Whoa. I'll see all of you on the very next go around.